Determining the film's approach took several years to figure out. For the most part, I was at a loss as to how to tell a story as big and demanding as this one. Each year the project would grow because new leads for potential evidence continued to be brought to our attention. I didn't have any previous experience in managing something so large and there were multiple considerations. One was, what did the Bible actually say happened? Another was, what were the archaeologists saying about the evidence or lack of it? In what context did all this happen in history? There was a great need to make complex information visually simple so that all of us could understand it. And finally, there was my own personal journey because when all of this started, I had no idea where this story would take me. At the core of the film was the biblical narrative. Early on, most people, including myself, didn't know very much about the biblical details that the film would be investigating. For some, it meant learning about the Exodus for the first time. My writing partner and researcher, Steve Law and I, then determined which parts of the narrative we would tell that would help the viewer understand each phase of the investigation. I also knew the story had to be told in a concise and creative manner. So I asked Rabbi Manus Friedman to help me as the primary biblical storyteller, and he did a wonderful job. I felt that Rabbi Manus fit the role very well, and it was appropriate that a Jewish person be the one to narrate the account of his ancestors. The story of the Exodus begins before the Israelites leave Egypt. It begins with Abraham, when God brings him to the land of Canaan and makes a covenant with him. And in that covenant spells out the entire Exodus. Kevin Sorbo is our narrator and a fellow Minnesotan. His career took him to worldwide acclaim, playing in two TV series, Hercules and Andromeda. Recently, he played the atheistic professor in the film God's Not Dead. Besides introducing key interviews and setting up background information, Kevin also carried some of the biblical story. The text then says that God sent the tenth and final plague to force Pharaoh's hand. The death of the firstborn of man and beast. The Lord told the Israelites, that each household was to slaughter a lamb and mark the doorpost with the blood of the lamb. And on that horrible night, death passed over all the homes marked with blood. But in every home that wasn't marked, all the firstborn males died. There was crying and wailing in every Egyptian home because each family had lost someone. The fact that there were biblical recreations posed a challenge, especially since I lived in Minnesota. We would have to travel, find or make costumes, cast the right people, and then figure out how and specifically where the biblical scenes would be filmed. Some of the recreations were filmed in Egypt because the locations there were exactly correct for the story. I invited our executive producer, David Westner, to join me in the Egypt production, filming primarily in the Luxor area. It was at this time that we also met Egyptologist David Roll, his wife Ditas, and other Egyptologists. And in that magnificent setting, we talked about the connections between Egypt and the Bible. Israel was another country where we filmed a number of stirring biblical reenactments, including beautiful scenes with Abraham. Joseph and Jacob, the time of slavery in Egypt, and Moses at the burning bush. It was our co-producer, Pete Wendell, who guided us to Israel. Pete is excellent at finding connections with people and resources. His research led us to our Israeli producer, Sharon Shavit, founder of Biblical Productions. While in Israel, I had a wonderful experience working together for the first time with Palestinians and Israelis both behind and in front of the camera. 
Even though we had concerns about how this would turn out, all of our worries faded as everyone on the team joined very well together, helping us make this film about the Bible. My wife Jill and I felt a real connection with the people. It was an experience we will never forget. Sharon asked me early on who I wanted to talk with, and I gave her a list of top national leaders, like Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and President Shimon Peres, to name a few. She got everyone I wanted. The next consideration was who to interview. I learned early on that the film needed more than one viewpoint because there were multiple ways that people were interpreting the archaeological information. So I made numerous trips to Europe and the Middle East. Finally, there was my own journey. I didn't think originally that I would be in the film. In fact, I didn't want to be. That is why I said I was a reluctant participant. But over time, it became apparent that I was taking myself and the audience on a journey to answer these questions. Are the stories in the Bible true? Did the Exodus really happen? I started to understand that having questions of doubt is not new to people. It's not the questions that are the problem. It's what you do with them. And for me, I decided that instead of running from them or dismissing them, I would instead look for answers. Over time, I became comfortable with the idea of letting the Bible speak for itself. I was somewhere in the middle now, between scholars who had dismissed the Exodus as a legendary fairy tale and people of faith who didn't want it to be brought under scientific scrutiny. In both cases, the Bible was not allowed to be presented in the marketplace of new information. What Patterns of Evidence has accomplished, I believe, is to bring new evidence to light in a context that allows you, the viewer, to make up your own mind about the historical credibility of the Exodus, one of the foundational stories of the Bible. I've taught philosophy of film over the years, so I know how difficult it is to do documentary well. Uh, documentary filmmaking is definitely an art. And to take someone through a journey like that film does was uh, in a way very emotional for me because it was establishing um, the historicity of a uh, maybe the most fundamental event in, in the Bible, uh, the exodus from Israel that everything else is linked to and going back through all the evidence that was, uh, was related to it. So my experience was very positive because I myself had been through a personal journey earlier in my life when I was a college student in which I nearly lost my faith because I had doubted the historicity and reliability of the Bible. And so um, my initial impression was I was just glad that something like this existed, that someone had put the time and the energy and the resources in this to tell this story because I had been in those college classrooms in which professors said, said or seminary classrooms in which the professors said um, the exodus didn't happen or if it didn't happen, it wasn't in a miraculous setting and it was more of an anthropological, sociological, um, and spiritual phenomenon than it was something actually set in time and space. Well, I was immediately impressed with its journalistic quality, uh, that it wasn't an agenda film, that it was uh, set in a situation of genuine exploration and discovery, which I think is where the average viewer will be. Everyone has the question of, that the journalist has. Uh, it really does matter. As the great documentary filmmaker Errol Morris has said, it does really matter who pulled the trigger. It, it does matter whether or not things actually happened in, in time and space and in history. And when you're dealing with something in ancient history like the Bible, something that we don't have e easy access to, it just uh, makes the stakes even higher. So what impressed me with the way the film was done was that it didn't take anything for granted. It approached it like an investigative journalism piece, which was very reassuring because I'm a scholar. 
I want to know that things are, are done with a great amount of care, with the best scholarship, and talking to the best authorities. And I'll, let me add something to that. The fact that both views uh, on the historicity of the Exodus was represented in the film, I thought was to the film's credit. In other words, it didn't uh, set the thing up as a black and white, everything was decided at the beginning uh, exploration. It followed, as the film's title said, the pattern of evidence, and it uh, left a body of, of information and evidence for the viewer to, to decide, and I found that to be particularly powerful. So you felt like a member of the jury sitting in that, uh, that theater. My stock and trade is to work with um, young people from 18 years old, really up until they're 30 years old after they graduate and so forth, young alumni and so forth. I very much see this generation as a make the case for me generation. They're open. They genuinely want to know um, what is the background to things. They're very interested in origins. Take, for example, every major Hollywood hit practically that has come out in the last couple of years is a superhero film. And what happens in a superhero film? It's always an origins narrative. What is the origin to Batman? What is the origin to Spider-Man? That's in the consciousness of this generation. How do things get started? And I think millennials are very much interested, if you're talking to them about Christianity, you can't just walk up to them and say, will you believe this or will you not believe this? Will you pray pray to, to receive this? They want to say, make the case for me. I I establish uh, some, some corroborating evidence that, that I might want to, to think about this. And uh, you have to go back to the beginnings of the story. And that's what I think is so powerful about this film is it goes back to a very fundamental core story that everything else hinges upon. And I think once, a, once you actually have the biblical narrative take something take place in the real world, that it actually happened, I think it opens up the door to have all kinds of other conversations about God entering the world, and I think it can re-enchant the imaginations of, of young people with the biblical narrative. <laughs>